Good morning. Good morning. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Every Sunday is Easter Sunday, right? Yes. Every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. We learned that from Pastor Ed, and we're not going to forget that, right? We're going we're gonna to keep reminding ourselves of that truth. Uh, but today is also Pentecost Sunday. And, and this is a great day for us to celebrate and rejoice. And so we'll be talking about that a little bit more later on. But I want to begin um, by just welcoming you all here. I want to welcome those who are tuning in online. We appreciate everybody taking the time to tune in online. Uh, we appreciate the, those who take care of our technology and en enable us to do that. We have people that watch us here in the community as well as even around the world that are tuning in and seeing um, a part of our worship. And, and as good as that is, there's nothing quite like being together here in person. And so I know if you're able to come in, I just encourage you to, to come and be here in person. There's really no, no way you can substitute that. But, but those of you who can't come in, this is this technology is fantastic, and we really appreciate it. So I, I want to say thanks to all those who who make that available for us each week. We have we have list of prayer requests that we have available in the entryway. We've got announcement sheets that are also in the entryway, and we want to make you aware of that. But I want to begin today by reading a passage of scripture from Isaiah twenty nine, Isaiah twenty nine, verses thirteen and fourteen. These the words of the Lord. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by men. Therefore, once more, I will astound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will perish. The intelligent of the intelligent will vanish. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us, who will know? You turn things upside down as if the potter were, though he were like the clay. Shall what is formed say to him who is formed, he did not make it? Can the pot say to the potter, he knows nothing? We come to the potter, and his name is Jesus. We come to worship him, worship him, not just with our words, but with our whole heart, with our whole strength, our whole mind. And so I just invite you to, to come and to give the Lord, the worship that he deserves. So let's just pause for a moment. <clears throat> Father, we need you to pour out your spirit upon us. We need your grace and your mercy to show yourself afresh and anew in this place. We are a needy people. So come and have your way here among us. This is our desire. Yeah. 
Father God, we call out to you this morning as a people who have gathered to both bear witness to what has happened and also anticipate what comes next. We thank you for Christ and the work that he has done for us. And we anticipate this Sunday on Pentecost Sunday, the filling of the church with the Holy Spirit that calls us out to do your work in this world. God, give us courage, give us boldness, to do, both to testify to what you have done and to put our feet on the ground and our hands to work in doing what you would do in this world. In Christ's name we pray and by the Spirit, amen. Did stop our display? 
a new song to Josh and, and Nancy. So anyway, I think you need to get a different mic. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that one that they're always giving me. <laughs> oh, spread the tidings round. Wherever the man is found. Wherever human hearts and human woes abound, let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Holy Ghost from heaven. imagine the day of Pentecost I don't think they were I think they were some I don't know I would, I would like to experience it I would like the comforter there's wind blowing the Holy Spirit came down yes we're gonna sing about tongues of fire Wednesday um, pastor talked about ex the fullness of God and we're gonna sing this the next song is called fullness and we need to experience the fullness of God fullness what? we're doing fullness oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> the songs don't match I mean it talks about the Holy Spirit but we're talking about <laughs> oh. 
promise of eternal promise stirring in your sons and daughters earth revealing heaven's wonder What you spoke is now unfolding. All your children shall be holding. Dreams awaken in this moment. Spirit come, spirit come. Your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this house. Pour it out. Let your love run over here and now. Let your glory fill this Now the world awaits your presence And this power is within us We will rise to be your witness Spirit come, Spirit come Pour it Continue burning for our King is soon returning. As we hold to this assurance, Spirit come, Spirit come, Spirit come, Spirit come. Spirit come. Spirit come.
invite you today. Uh, we have these kneeling benches here at the front. Um, sometimes we call them altars. And if you have a, a particular need or request, you want to come forward and, and kneel as we approach to God in prayer, you're welcome to do that here today. Pastor Ed's going to lead us in prayer after we sing this next song. And so I just invite you to, to bring a burden that you might have walked in the door with Bring it down here to the front, and you can set it down at the feet of Jesus and leave it there. Leave it at his feet. Let him have control. Let him move in your heart and your life. And so as we sing this next song, as we continue to pray, continue to invite God to do his work in our lives, let's, let's open up our heart for him to do that work.
change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change. Stand on your word, Holy Spirit, rain down. Our Heavenly Father, that is the cry of our heart this morning. Comforter and friend, fill us again. Lord, fill this house with your Holy Spirit. Penetrate the hardness of hearts, the selfishness and the centeredness, Lord, that we have so prevalent in our society. And may we reflect the love of Jesus to everyone we come in contact with. May they know that we are filled with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that purifies and empowers us for Christian service. For, Lord, we, we can do no good thing apart from you. But with you, Lord, the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And, Lord, we thank you today for this church, for its leadership. Thank you for Pastor Andy and Stephanie, for Pastor Josh and Megan. Thank you, Lord, for all of those who serve in a variety of places and capacities, all the teachers and board members and servants that too often don't get enough credit. But, Lord, we just thank you for this church that believes in an altar of prayer. The altar is not just for sinners to come and repent, but it is a great place for God's people to come and pray. And Lord, we just thank you for those that are here today. Thank you, Lord, that we have a place where we can come and lay down our burdens. And Lord, we know that you carry them and shoulder them, for you promised when we are weary and heavy laden to come unto you and you give us rest. Thank you for that rest, that peace. Thank you, Lord, for your presence and your power. Thank you, Lord, that we can come today and honor you and give you glory for who you are and all that you have done in our lives. Thank you for the love and the mercy and grace you have shown me. Thank you, Lord, for the ways that you have protected us in your providential keeping and care. Thank you, Lord, for healing. There are many that are here today uh, back with us that have been absent, and we are glad to see them. Thank you, Lord, for not only being the healer of my sin-sick soul, but also, Lord, the healer of our physical bodies. And we thank you, Lord, for your touch upon us. And Lord, we just come and give you praise and honor and glory today, and we say thank you for all that you have done. And Lord, we ask these things and have requests and need, and we ask them not because we are good, but because you are good. You are gracious. You are generous. And Lord, we just thank you for who you are and all that you continue to do. And Lord, we not only pray for the needs of this church, but also, Lord, the mission of this church as we go forward. May we see growth and number and spirit. May we reach out to win souls, not for numbers and statistics sake, but that they are eternal souls that are lost without Jesus. Lord, may we see a great revival here and may it start with us. Oh, Lord, we just pray that uh, we will also see a revival in our nation, Lord. We need it. And we pray, Lord, that as we go forward, that we will be the good citizens that you want us to be and help us, Lord, as your people, called by your name to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face, turn from our ways, and then you will hear from heaven Forgive our sins and heal our land. Bring a healing, Lord, and a revival once again. 
We love you, Lord, and we just thank you today for this Pentecost Sunday. And we pray that you will pour out your spirit, your power upon us once again so that we can be the light of the world that you have called us to be. And Lord, help us to continue the mission of Jesus until you call us home or until you come again. We are looking forward to that day because we know that the best is yet to come for those who trust in Jesus. We thank you, Lord, and we just give you the honor and the glory again and again. With our hearts full, we say thank you and praise God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. For those of you who don't already know, I'm Pastor Josh. I, this is my second Sunday here, so whoo, praise God. Um, Andy was real excited this morning. He got to nudge me yesterday and say, hey, you're going to do announcements today. And I said, all right then. So he left me a list up here to go through. Um, right after I'm done with announcements, we're going to have one of our teens read the scripture for this morning. But until then, you're still stuck with me. So don't get too excited. Uh, First thing on our announcements list, uh, we, as the youth of the church, are doing a bake sale fundraiser to help um, cover the costs of six of our teenagers who are wanting to go to camp. So I don't know how many of you might have gone to camp when you were young or considered young, but it's a transformative experience. It's a wonderful, fun time, and we want to be able to send these kids with some mean. Um, so... After service, there's a table on your left side as you wing out, and you can find there some order forms to pick up. We're selling chocolate chip cookies and my family's secret recipe of cinnamon rolls. These are the reason that I got up early on Christmas morning, not the presents. It was the cinnamon rolls. So if you guys could support our youth in that way, we're going to have them out there handing out those order forms. If you have any other questions, feel free to talk to me. Also, um, coming up, we have a Memorial Day picnic on, what's the date, Andy? The 31st, Memorial Day. Thank you. All y'all know better than me. I see it up here now. Anyway, May 31st, Memorial Day picnic. It's trying to make me sing. Oh, say can you eat? Please sign up in the foyer. So I'm not going to go on, but recordings are available where you sign up. So... We got that going on. Also, we, uh, Risa and us are launching our Sunday schools back up on June 6th. That'll be at 9 a.m. around here at the church. And also, we have an alpha class on that same date, June 6th, at 5 p.m. launching. So without anything else, I'm going to pass it off to somebody you know, that you guys want to hear from. Molly? Thank you, Pastor Josh. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were just staying in Jerusalem. God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one of them heard their own language being spoken. They have Miss Kim today, so... Let's pray a blessing upon them, and, and uh, we thank all our workers, the people involved with our children. Great group of, of children here. Let's pray. God, we, we pray that you'd bless them, each one of them. You know the families they come from, you know the parents and the, the struggles that they have, and and the difficulties in their own heart, their own life. 
We pray that this would be a place where they can meet with you and experience you. We pray that this would be a place where, where the love of Jesus can be shown to each of these children. That they would know you and follow you at an early age. Be with our workers, every volunteer that helps and gives their time and sacrifices for your honor, for your glory, for your kingdom's sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll allow them to follow Miss Kim in an orderly and polite fashion. passage of scripture from, from Acts, and we've talked about the fact that this is Pentecost Sunday, so we celebrate, among other things on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate that God is doing something new, and, and sometimes it's easy for us to, to maybe get discouraged with change, not everybody likes change, but, but God does bring about change whether we like it or not. Sometimes it's difficult for us, but when you read the, the story of the book of Acts, I, I hope that you, you recognize that, that these folks here had to deal with a lot of change, and it wasn't easy for them. And so the, the day of Pentecost that we read about in, in Acts chapter 2 is a fulfillment of what Jesus promised in Acts chapter 1. And so in Acts chapter 1, he said he's going to pour out his spirit upon the people, and he's going to do a new thing. And so the, the spirit stirs boldness and courage in the baby church. And the spirit stirs up curiosity among the people out on the streets. And the spirit prepares one group to speak and another group to hear, what God wants to communicate to them. And so I titled the message, Spirit Comes and Church Goes. The Spirit comes and then the church goes. And it has to happen that, in that order. Jesus told the disciples to go and wait in Jerusalem until the Spirit comes with power. And so it's, it's with the exclamation point would, would represent the church because God's given the church a message. He's given the church boldness to, to proclaim that message. But then you could represent the world with a question mark. You know, what's going on here? What are they doing? What, what's, what's happening here in this place? This, is, this looks a little bit bizarre. I don't understand what's happening. So, so the exclamation point represents the church, and the question mark represents the world. And one thing that I know, that there's people in Citrus County that are far from God. Have you met any of them before? They are a long ways away from God, and yet God is working in their lives. Did you know that? It doesn't maybe look like it from our perspective, but God is working in their lives. And, and in theological terms, we call this provenient grace because it's God working in their lives before they are even aware of what he's doing. God's working in everyone's life before they're even aware of it, and he worked that way in our life as well. Those of us who are following Jesus, we didn't wake up one, one day and decide, you know, I think I'm going to follow Jesus today. No, what happened to us was God came to us first, and through his grace, he, he drew us. He stirred us from within to, to hunger and thirst for the things of God. And so if we are following Christ, it's because God came to us first. Provenient grace, God working in my life before I even knew it, before I even recognized it. And, and my conviction is that God is working in Citrus County. God is drawing people. He's speaking to people. He's working in their lives because God wants them to come. God wants them to come to him maybe even more than we do. And so sometimes God uses the church. Sometimes he uses us to speak, to talk to them, to be a witness to them. Sometimes he uses our kindness as we reflect Christ in the way that we live, in the way that we treat others, God will use our kindness sometimes to draw people. Sometimes he'll use a Bible that a Gideon left in a motel room somewhere. Sometimes he'll use the path. He'll, he uses all kinds of avenues to communicate, 
to people, and sometimes he even uses dreams. Now, that's not just something we read about in the Bible, but that's how God even works today. If we are attuned to, to the, the voice of God, we can hear from God even through a dream. I read this last week about a, a Muslim man uh, from Syria who immigrated a few years ago. He immigrated to Sweden. And as a Muslim living in Sweden, uh, he was a genuine person trying to follow God and trying to do the right thing. And so as he was seeking God, he thought it was Allah, of course. But as he was seeking God, God started speaking to him in this dream that he had over and over and over again. And he saw the same thing each and every time in this dream. He saw hundreds and even thousands of people standing with their arms raised, and they were singing, and they were, they were joyful, and yet they were also weeping at the same time. And, and he couldn't figure out what it was. What was God trying to communicate to him? And so the only thing that he knew to do was to try to find this place. And he lived in Sweden, in a, in a town north of the capital city, Stockholm. And so he, he'd been to Stockholm before, knew that that was a big city. And so he thought, that must be the place where, where this building is. And so he, he got on a train and he, he went to Stockholm. Had no idea where he was going. And he gets off the train, and as this Muslim man gets off the train, he meets a man who's standing here and says, you've come too far. You need to go back two stops. You need to go north. And he told him the town, Uppsala. And, and he thought, okay. So he gets back on the train. He looks back, and the man that he talked to wasn't there any longer. And he thought it, it must be God. So again, he gets back on the train. He goes back up north to the city. Again, gets off the train. He asked somebody, he said, where can I find a building where people raise their hands like this? And he said, in Sweden... People don't raise their hands normally. In Sweden, they're not very expressive, he said. And so he knew that there had to be a unique place for this to be happening. And, and when he got off the train and he asked where this place might be, they said, well, of course, it's the Word of Life Church. You need to go there. And they sent him to this church where he met and found Jesus and is a follower of Jesus today. Now, God is working He's working in, in Muslim lives in Stockholm, in Sweden, in Syria, in Iran. There are stories in Iran that are just incredible. Out in these villages of, of God coming to people and, and doing miraculous things that can only be understood and only be explained as this is a move of the Spirit of God. And these people, at the risk of in, in, you know, imprisonment, at the risk of being cut off from their family, these people are following Jesus. And, and there's one book that's a fascinating read that, that tells some stories about what's going on in Iran. And it says there's too many of them, there's too many of us for them to jail. Because they started putting them in jail, but then they discovered they're overflowing the jails, all these Christians that they're arresting. There's a revival that's going on in Iran, and we don't read much about it. CNN and Fox, they don't do a whole lot of coverage on the revival that's going on in Iran. But these people are given their lives, and, and they have no theological training. And they are completely and totally dependent upon God and His Spirit. And so they can get a Bible smuggled to them in some way. They want to read the Bible, and they want to pour over the pages of the Scripture, and they want to do what they read about in the Scriptures, in the book of Acts. They, want, they think that their church ought to look like the church of Acts. Isn't that crazy? It's a good thing they don't come to America, right? And see some of our churches. Sometimes I wonder about us. Why we don't look more like what we read about in the pages of Acts. But, but there's a couple things I want to communicate to you today. I want this message to be an encouragement. And so I want to encourage you to believe that the Holy Spirit is still, is still is still working in our world today. It's, it's not just something we read about in the pages of Scripture long, long ago in a place far, far away. But God is working still today here in our lives, here in our church, here in Citrus County. 
And, and the, the key for us is to figure out where it is that God's working so that we can join together with him and be a part of what God's doing, what God wants to do right here in our lives and in our community. So I want this to be an encouragement to you. What we read about what happened in the book of Acts, God wants to do something new even with us today. I think if we'd grab a microphone and go around the room and ask, you know, do you believe that the Holy Spirit is working today? I, I think most people would say, well, yeah. Yeah, of course, I believe the Holy Spirit's here. The Holy Spirit's working, yeah. We'd all say yes, but how do we order our lives that that's true? How do we, how do we live our lives in a way that we really believe that and we put that into practice? A number of years ago, there was a, a Korean pastor that visited America, David Cho, and I think he's got, at least at one time, he had the largest church in the world, like 850,000 people in this church. Of course, he doesn't have a building that's big enough, and so if you attend that church, if you're a member of that church, you can only go to the building once every six weeks because there's so many people there. We don't have that problem here, do we? They bought a mountaintop so that they can run buses up on this mountain, and they call it Prayer Mountain, and that's what they have, people praying 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's a pretty common practice that, that everyone would pray and fast each week. And, and for those who are able, they take the bus up to the mountain and they pray and fast all day. And I wonder why the church is growing. I wonder why they're reaching people. you have any ideas of what could be? Well, well, Pastor Cho comes to America like 30-some years ago. Maybe it's probably 40 years ago now. And they ask him, so what do, you, what do you think of the church here in America? And he says, it's amazing how much you can accomplish without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Ouch. It's amazing what we can accomplish without the Holy Spirit. Our buildings, our programs, all the machinery that we have going. Tozer, you know, one of my favorite preachers from a day gone by, he said, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we do would go on, and no one would know the difference. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the New Testament church, 95% of what they did would stop, and everyone would know the difference. I want to encourage you that the Holy Spirit is still working today. He wants to work today. He wants to be involved. He wants to draw people. He wants to lead us. He wants to guide us. He wants to give us words. He wants to give us boldness. He wants to use us to be the church that goes out into the world and reflects Christ at every opportunity. John 14, verse 16, Jesus gave this promise. He said, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever. Now, Jesus doesn't lie. Jesus gives us the truth, doesn't he? Yes. And he says he's going to pour out the Holy Spirit and he will be with us forever. And sometimes, sometimes we sense God's presence in different ways. Sometimes he moves us in, in a really powerful emotional way. Maybe, maybe, we, maybe we go into tears and we cry and, and sometimes we shout and we sing and sometimes it's in the, in the quietness of just maybe opening up our, our Bible and reading the words, God comes and moves in our heart and he moves in our life. There's not just one way that God moves and the Spirit moves in our life and we recognize his presence, but he's there and he's drawing people and he's wanting to work in our hearts. He wants to work in our church. He wants to work in our families. The question is, are we in tune to him? Are we... Are we making ourselves available to hear from him and to follow him. So I want to encourage you to believe that God is among us and he's working. But secondly, I want to encourage you to take that step of faith, knowing that we're not going to be alone, but that God will be with us. But, but to be faithful to what God calls us to do and to be requires faith. It requires a step of courage, right? Yes. 
to go into the unknown, to do something maybe we've not done before, to stretch us in a way that we think is impossible for us. One of my favorite passages of Scripture is Matthew 14. And in this passage, you know, Jesus is talking to his disciples. They have a long day, lots of activities going on. And Jesus tells his disciples, I want you to get in the boat, cross the Sea of Galilee. I'm going to stay and pray here in, in solitude. Now, there's a whole sermon in that, but that's not what I'm going to preach here today. Jesus alone praying in solitude. Jesus, who is God, who is fully God, praying, taking the time to pray from, from a busy schedule. Anyway, that's not the sermon. But you could make a sermon out of the fact that he puts them into this boat and up comes some wind and the waves. And these ex expert fishermen who are used to being out on the water, they are struggling to get across to the other side. And the Bible tells us that just before dawn, they see a figure that appears that it might be Jesus, but they're not sure. So they didn't have any lights out there that they could you know, turn that way and see if that, in fact, is Jesus coming. And so Peter, you know, the, the spokesman of, the, the leader of, you know, the, the disciples, he's always speaking out, and sometimes he puts his foot in his mouth. This is one of those times that I'm, I'm thinking, Peter, no, no, don't say that. And Peter wants to verify, is, is this, you know, am I seeing things out here, or is this really Jesus? Jesus, if that's you, you call me out on the water, and I'll walk out on the water with you. No, Peter, no, don't, don't get confirmation that way. You know, have Jesus, like, you know, strike a lightning bolt, or, you know, cause a fish to jump out of the water and into the boat. You know, something safe. Don't ask me to step out of the boat and onto the rough waves and walk. But Jesus doesn't hesitate. Come on, Peter. Come on out. And Jesus, and, and Jesus is still calling us out of the boat even today. I'm out here into the world, into the risky areas of life. Not, not in the boat where I know this boat and I'm comfortable in this boat and I'm safe in this boat, but he's calling us out of the boat and into the unknown sometimes. And the question is, are we going to follow him or not? We're in a county that, that I've told you till you're sick of me here and you know, the same statistics over and over again. In the last 10 years, our county's increased by almost 30% in growth in attendance and population. People are moving into our, in our community. At the same time, our church has been in decline about 30% in those same 10 years. That's not a good sign. We're, we're not being effective in reaching the hundreds, thousands of people that are moving into our own community. So how are we going to do this? I think we've got a couple of different responses. One response that we could have is, is we could lament about the good old days. You remember when? And I want you to think about Pentecost. Think about Pentecost for a moment. Remember how they had this glorious temple? That they would go and they'd bring their animals and, and they would do the sacrifices, and even if you lived away from Jerusalem. You remember the good old days and, and how they could reminisce and, and how we would go to Jerusalem, we'd take the pilgrimage, and we'd, we'd have our animal sacrifices, and, and we would sing the psalms. You remember the good old psalms, these, these young kids, they don't know the psalms like we used to know them, and we'd sing the psalms of ascent as we climbed the mountain up to the hill of Zion, and we would worship God. You remember how great and wonderful that was? And now all that's changed. It wasn't well received. God's new work at Pentecost wasn't well received by the leaders of the synagogue, by the leaders of the temple, by the leaders in the Sanhedrin, was it? They didn't appreciate any of this new stuff that God was doing. And in fact, they didn't think this new stuff was of God at all. In fact, they were so convinced that they persecuted these early followers of Jesus. 
One of the problems I think we have in, in our churches today is we, we have this tendency to want to lament about the good old days. And we look back at the rock church. And, and do you remember Easter? Remember that Easter service? 1965? And look at the men. The men were wearing ties. Isn't that good? Even Robert Croft is wearing a tie. If you can find Robert Croft in this photo, you get bonus points. The, the ladies, the girls are wearing dresses. That, that's back in the good old days, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with looking back and finally remembering the good times that you've had and the good experiences that you've had. There's nothing wrong with remembering the good things that God has done in the past. But we can't put God in a, in a box and say this is how he has to work and only work this way. And it, it is sad in some ways when you look back at the, the Rock Church and, and there's a photo of, the, of a miniature copy of the Rock Church. I wish I could have seen the church you know, in person and maybe gone inside. But, but to see this, this Rock Church that was built by hand and, and the bell that was purchased and hung up in the belfry. And, and so we can, we can do one of two things. We can look back and remember the good old days when, when we didn't have indoor plumbing, when we didn't have air conditioning, when we were worshiping in July at the Rock Church. <laughs> uh, those were the good old days, right? But they, they really were good days. And there's nothing wrong with, with remembering those fondly. But God wants to do a new thing. Yes. And sometimes he wants to upset us in our comfort to do that new thing. Because he's not interested in our comfort as much as he's interested in doing his agenda. And so our second response is we can look ahead and see maybe what God might be doing in the days to come. One of the problems that we have in the church is we've kind of figured out how to do church in such a way that we can do it virtually without God or without the Holy Spirit. Because when we ask the Holy Spirit to come, it kind of makes us com uncomfortable because we don't have control over when He comes and when He moves and how He comes and how He moves. And we like to be in control, don't we? Every one of us likes to have a measure of control. We like to have control like we do at a vending machine. We want our God like the vending machine. We know we can pull out the, the quarters and the dimes and the nickels. We can put it in and pull the lever, and out comes God moving when we want him to move, moving how we want him to move, responding and blessing us the way we want to be blessed. But God's not a vending machine. He doesn't respond that way and come to us in that way. The quote I shared earlier, how it's amazing what we can accomplish apart from the Holy Spirit. I could pick on the pastors a little bit, right? And we pastors, we go to, we go to college, we go to seminary, we study, we learn the Bible pretty well. We know kind of how to read the Scriptures and understand the Scriptures, and we know how to prepare a sermon. And, and as we do these sort of things, we can... We can kind of prepare a sermon and, and produce one, get one written and typed out, even apart from God. And if we're not careful, if I'm not careful in seeking God and taking time to seek God, I might be preaching what Andy wants to preach and not preaching what God wants me to preach. And I've got to be real careful about that. Nobody wants to hear from me. But we want to hear from God. And so if I'm going to be an effective pastor and preacher at all, I better be seeking God in a serious manner. But Sunday school teachers can fall in the same pattern trap as well. They know how to do a lesson. We get our quarterlies. We get our lesson books. We know what to do. Say this here. Read this there. Go through the motions. But it's not just true for pastors and teachers, but for any one of us Christians. 
We wake up in the morning and God has something for us to do, but we know, well, I got to go to work and I got to stop by the store and I got to do this and that. And so we've got our agenda and oh yeah, God, by the way, okay, yeah, I'll do whatever you want me to. And out the door we go and we do our agenda. We're real good at that, but we sometimes forget about God. Where is it that you want to lead me? How is it that you want to use me today? Who is it that you're putting in my path that I can be a witness to? You remember I said at the beginning that God has given us the spirit of boldness to be a witness in the way that we live and the way sometimes we have to speak. I think I shared this on a Wednesday night. Um, I was in the office in the afternoon. I had some stuff I was trying to accomplish, trying to get done. My, my thinking was on my agenda, what I was wanting to do. Somebody unexpectedly came by, and they wanted some help, and so I helped them in the office with what they needed. And, and then, you know, they, Pastor, let me ask you a question and pop a question about prayer. You know, and sometimes people, they, they don't know, they get nervous around preachers, and so, well, I better say something religious, and so what can I say? A prayer, okay, yeah. But this wasn't that kind of a question. This is a question of, you know, I'm trying to pray. Am I doing it right? And so I had an opportunity to to talk to this person. I hadn't planned on it. I hadn't prepared for it. But as I look back at the end of the day, I, I think God was in that. He arranged for all of that to take place and to happen at the time and the way that it happened. I know we're going to get nervous and we get nervous with some of the excesses that we see, right? You know, we, we probably have all met somebody or know somebody that, you know, God's telling them every little move and every little make, you know, every step to take and everything they do, and it's God this and God that, and you think, eh, I'm not so sure about all this. Oh, I just went to Walmart, and the, the parking lot was full, and I said, God, you know I need a parking spot, and my, my legs bother me, and, and whoa, lo and behold, right there at the front, I got a parking spot, and then I went in, and the item I was going to buy was on sale. Da, 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 da. God, 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 every time. I'm not trying to discount any of that, but sometimes it seems like, you know, maybe. And so we don't want to be like that, and so we swing the pendulum clear to the other side, and... And we, we just squeeze God out of it all together. But I'm convinced that God wants to use us and wants to talk to us and witness through us and for us to be his hands and feet. And in the church, I know that we're, we're good at making plans. And I'm not opposed to planning and making preparations. But sometimes we just need the supernatural work of God. We need God to come and move. God wants to do a new thing. Now, a couple weeks ago, I got forced into doing something new, and I didn't really want to do it. I, I had this bad sinus infection. I couldn't get over it, and I kept thinking, you know, I'll drink some orange juice and, you know, lots of water, and, and it'll get... Week goes on, I'm miserable all week, massive headache because I'm taking all this decongestant stuff and my blood pressure is sky high. And so, oh, I got to get some help. Okay, I'm going to the doctor. But by the time I come to this realization, the emergent care facilities are closed and, you know, you can't get in. And so I decided I'm going to check out one of these online doctors. You know, I'm old enough, that's kind of quackery stuff to me. I want to go to a doctor. I want to talk. I want to look him in the eyes. I want him to feel me and and see what I'm going through. I had a great doctor in Wichita, Dr. Hill. I loved him. He was a Christian man that I'd come in, he'd talk to me about the church and what's going on. And I don't have my doctor that I used to have. And so I've got to, I'm thrown out of the boat here trying to figure out what to do different than new. So, but I'm miserable enough, I'm willing to give it a shot. So I do this online thing, and kind of pleasantly surprised that, boy, I scheduled an appointment when I wanted an appointment. I didn't have to wait for the doctor to work me in his schedule. I was able to work in the schedule I wanted. And I never had to leave the house. I could do it virtually. The doctor, right over over the internet, over the, you know, the, the video conference with the doctor. 
And I took my blood pressure and took my temperature and you know, gave him some of those kind of things. And, and he ordered lab results and ordered prescription and did all that sort of thing. And the only, thing, the only time I had to leave the house was go pick things up at my prescriptions. That was pretty slick. And then I got one of those courtesy emails to respond and a courtesy text message from my doctor saying, how are you doing? Are you doing better? And, and then another follow-up card in the mail that came. And I thought, wow, this is, this is pretty good. And of course, me, one of the things that I liked was the price going to this doctor was half of what it was to go to the doctor in person. I was impressed by this online doctor because I've been to one of these area doctors and I've gone to an office and I won't tell you my doctor that I went to but the waiting room it was dirty and I had to go there and my time I was there on time but I had to wait past the time that I was supposed to get in you know how that works and when they finally call you back you go back into another room and you wait again for another 30 minutes as they stall around or doing what they're doing and and I had to pay up front because I was a new patient and all that sort of thing. And, and then when I requested a detailed billing, I was told, well, they, they couldn't print it out right now, but, but they'll send one in the mail to me. Well, it didn't come in the mail. I can't submit it to the insurance. So I tried to call them back, and I got this bad experience of calling a jillion times, and they defer me to the billing department, and on and on it goes. It's a bad experience that I had. And, and I look at these two... Yeah, this is pretty easy. That wasn't too tough. Sometimes we get stuck with the way things have been done in the past, you know. Church has to be like this. Sunday school has to start at 9.45. Can't start at 9 o'clock. It's got to start at 9.45, so give us all enough time to milk the cows before we go to Sunday school, right? Because that's what we're all doing first thing in the morning we're off milk, milking our cows and then we got to milk the cows and change your clothes and then get to church so 9 45 that's the earliest we can get here and then 10 45 for the regular service to start just like the good old days i mean peter and paul that's what their churches that's the time their churches started so we've got to do it that way programs we've always done it this way right we've always had the men's and the women's, and we've always, we've always done things that way. We can't change. Maybe God wants to do some new things here among us to reach the people in our community that are flooding in our county, clogging up our roads, <laughs> packing out the Dunkin' Donuts line to go through and get your coffee. Last week uh, at the food distribution, Nancy was gone to her brother's funeral. And then I was given the privilege of going and praying for the people as Nancy normally has that role. And so as I would go to the people, some of them I recognized, and, and, and I would, you know, say hello, and you know, they knew who I was. But, but some of them I didn't recognize, and so I would come to introduce myself and say, well, my name's Pastor Andy yeah, I know who you are. You, you do? Yeah, I see you on, on TV. I see you online. Oh, really? Yeah. Since we've been coming here, we found about your church, and we've been watching online. So I, I've tried to invite you know, people as Nancy does, as you pray with people and, and minister to them. And, and some of the things that we're doing that we wouldn't have thought about doing a few years ago, God's using and reaching people and touching people. The Holy Spirit is still at work today. The Holy Spirit is still stirring boldness in the people of God. And the Spirit is still stirring up curiosity in, in people who are far from God, people in, in our own county. I kind of close with, with what I've shared before, but, you know, apologies to Martin Luther King, but I have a dream. I have a dream that, that one day the Hernando Church of the Nazarene is going to be filled from this side and the overflow all the way over to this side. 
with young and old and middle-aged, families, retirees, people all over the all over the spectrum. I have a dream that, that we're going to be marching over and having baptism after baptism because new people come into faith and want to join. I have a dream that we're going to be sending students and young people and new Christians out into the world to be pastors and missionaries and church planters and leaders. I have a dream that, that the church, Hernando Church of the Nazarene here, as good and glorious as our past days have been, that God has even better days in store for us in the future. The problem today is that people have not lost their spiritual hunger. They're still spiritually hungry. The problem today is that our church, our church and churches generally, is not connecting with them. We've lost our relevance. When people come to church these days, Pastor Kerry Newhoff says, few are looking for information about God, more are looking for an experience with God. I'm convinced God wants to meet with people. When we gather to worship on Sunday morning, and so we pray before we, we come into this place, and we, we come with hearts prepared to seek after God and to see God move here among us, to see God work. Just as God did in the book of Acts, we believe that he can do it again today. That he's not limited. Oh, I did it once and it's all over now. No. God wants to do some, a new work here. Things that, that I don't even know about. And he wants to stretch me and he wants to call me out of the boat and he wants me to do things that I'm not comfortable with. But I want to be available. I want to walk where the Holy Spirit leads me. I don't want to be stuck saying we can't do it. We've never done it this way before. The Holy Spirit is working today all around the world, even in Citrus County. The Holy Spirit's preparing the church to speak, preparing the church to go, preparing Citrus County to hear. The question is, are, are we... Are we available to be used today? I want to encourage you to believe the Holy Spirit's at work. I want to encourage you to take that step of faith to go and follow wherever it is He's calling us to go. And I, I don't know if, if we could just close the service with an opportunity to maybe respond again to God. We have these places in the Church of Nazarene. There's, we kind of set them apart as, as a place of prayer where we can come and kneel. And, it, and it's, it's a place you, you can meet with God beside your bed. You can meet with God as you're sitting in the pew. You can meet with God anywhere. But, but we, we kind of set these places aside because it's a place where we can come and posture ourselves before God as we kneel before him and say, God, here I am. Here, I'm kneeling before you. You're the Lord. Come and, and have your way in my life. I'm available. Use me as you see fit. And some of us, maybe we need to come and say, I want to be filled. I want to be filled once again with the Spirit of God. Somehow my life, it's sort of leaked out, and, and that happens from time to time, and we need a fresh filling, and so I just, as the musicians come, I want to, I don't know what they might sing or play, but as they come and, and sing and play, I want to give you an opportunity to respond, just uh, respond in prayer. If you'd like to come to hear the front, you can do so. But a response in prayer, God, here I am, I'm available. Holy Spirit, now art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, now art welcome in this place. Amen. 
You know our hearts cry. You know our, our desperate need for you. And I pray as we've come here on this Pentecost Sunday, I pray that we would be reminded once again that we can do nothing apart from you and that we are completely and totally dependent upon you. Pour out your spirit afresh and anew upon us. Help us to have some boldness to, to move forward. Give us the courage to take that step out of the boat to do what we're unable to do in our own strength and effort. God, we don't want to be a church that can operate apart from you. We want to be a church that depends upon you. God, our world desperately needs you. Citrus County desperately needs you. We've got families that are broken and torn apart and they desperately need you. God, I pray that, that you would use the Hernando Church of the Nazarene, that you would use us to go out and to be your witness. God, help us to stir up a hunger. God, I pray for the Hernando Church of the Nazarene. I pray that you'd raise up leaders. I pray that you'd bring new workers, new, new people to, to serve this harvest field. I pray that we would see young men and women, retirees that move in this county, in this community. I pray that they would see Christ as they found, they thought they were coming here to retire. May they come here to find you. May they find freedom following Christ and the new life that only comes from you. Father, I pray for this next year that we would begin to see you move in ways that we've not seen before. That we'd see people respond in ways that, that can't be explained by any other means then it was of God. It was God who drew them. God who led them. God who converted them. God who grew them. God, just help us to be your hands and feet. Help, help us to, to be your instruments in your hand. Come, Holy Spirit. And as the Spirit comes, send us out as the church of God, the people of God. Spirit comes and the church goes. As we leave this place, I pray that we would leave this place with the eyes of Jesus, being led by the Spirit of Jesus so that we can love 
in the way that Jesus loved. Help us to see those opportunities and take advantage of those opportunities that come our way. And may we be an encouragement to one another in the new work that that God is doing here in Citrus County using Hernando Church of the Nazarene. Go forth from this place but help us to not go forth apart from your Holy Spirit both today and forever. In your name we pray. And all the people said Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace. Be the instruments of God.